Hey folks, Bob coming at you. Today we're taking a look at the 1969 Rokon Trailbreaker. We're going to show you how you at home can put on a set of Maxxis Bighorns onto your bike. So stay tuned. folks the first thing we got to do is actually get the wheels and tires off of the bike and that starts with removing the chains so we've located the master link right here uh, it's critical to know that the master link we're always going to reinstall it in, in the same position when we take this off you'll see it has an open end and a closed end uh, I kind of like to think of it as a fish uh, and that the open end would be like its tail and this would be its head and you always want it swimming upstream so you always have the head going in a forward position and that's so that it won't uh, pop off when you hit a rock or a limb and I just use, like to use a little flat bladed screwdriver and pry it up like this and pop it over and then we've got the outside clip off and now we can we can pry off this link. Uh, this chain's pretty tight. A lot of times it's nicer to have the the chain loose. Um, it'll facilitate getting that off. I pop that off. A little bit of tapping back there. A little bit of prying right here. And uh, now we have a three-piece link and we've got this chain off of here so we can remove the wheel. Now the next thing you need, folks, is a, is a high-tech, really expensive uh, work stand. Or you can do what we're doing here and we've got a tote that we've tipped upside down and we've got some old scrap lumber on there to get the right height. And we're just going to lift this thing up there and balance it on there so that we can remove the wheels. tech work stand. Next thing we're going to do is get our 9 16 wrench. And since we're front heavy here, we're not going to loosen the axles and the wheel should just drop right off of there. That's kind of the beauty of the Rokon. You know there's not a lot of, there's no speedometer cables or anything to deal with. get to this part there you have it and, uh, Bob will wrestle the bike and I'll take the wheel off this particular bike when we put this together I wanted it to be as close to a stock as possible and from there I wanted to figure out what kind of changes I wanted to make as time progressed uh, we went with uh, some different handlebars, uh, some brush guards, and found that uh, I really wanted to upgrade these tires. And so that's why we're going with the Maxxis Bighorns. Now the fun part, folks. We are gonna, we're going to break the bead on these and do it in a safe manner that we can keep from uh, damaging these, these lightweight aluminum wheels. Okay, so we've got the, we've got the wheels off of the bike. The next thing we're going to do is uh, I've got a little Schrader core removal tool. We're going to take the cores out of these tubes so that we can uh, let all of the air out of the tires. Now Rokon's not going to have much air pressure. I usually run one and a half or two PSI. It's really, really low. In fact, I don't even use a gauge. Uh, my rule of thumb is the tire should be half squishy flat when you're sitting on it fully loaded with whatever load you're going to be. So. Um, lower tire pressure gives you more traction and it's also the only suspension we have so it'll give you a softer ride so we're taking out the Schraders we're gonna set those aside somewhere where we won't lose them 
And then uh, these ones have uh, some retainer nuts on the the uh, tubes, tube stems. We're going to take those off. And then we're going to take the non-sprocket side. We're going to take off the axle bolt and the spacers and the washers because that's the side that's going to be down when we dismount the bead. And we're going to make a note if there's any uh, extra special washers or spacers on that. Bob's got two and that's for, I don't see, this would be the, this would be the rear. Right. So mine has, uh, mine only had one, yours has two. So we'll get these, uh, these tube retainers out and then we'll start breaking the bead down. All right, folks, so what we've done is we've uh, placed a board that's wider than the tire underneath the tire itself, not the rim. So we just want the tire sitting on a board to support it and keep the wheel off of the ground. And then I placed another uh, board about three foot long as a ramp. And we're just going to have Bob drive his pickup up onto this ramp. And the weight of his truck is going to push down on this tire and break the feed. Easy. Come on. All right, come on. Come on, more. A little more, and there we go. So we have broke the bead on one side, we're gonna back off and we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. I'm gonna take this axle bolt out just so we're not gonna bend it. Hold on, Bob. Back up just a little bit. Okay, yep. come on back. We're good. There you go. All right, there you go, folks. We've uh, broke the bead, and we have not damaged the wheel or the sprocket in any way. So now we're going to pull the tubes out, and then we're going to spoon these off. We've got the beads broke, and now we're going to spoon these off of here. So I prepared some... Uh, some lubricant right here, and this is really just Joy dish soap mixed in a heavy concentration with some water for some lubricant. And I have some tire spoons that I use. A couple of these are commercially available. My favorite one is actually one that was made from an old leaf spring. And the reason you want to use a spoon and not a screwdriver or pry bar is you need a you want a smooth, uh, flat surface and not a pokey edge like you'd have on a pry bar or a screwdriver because that'll screw up your tube or or your tire. Uh, uh, I want to bring up a couple of points that's really important. When we're going to be prying against this tire, we want to have the opposite side of the bead down in the recess to give us some room. You can see the shape of this right here. We want the opposite side that we are uh, prying against, we want to have that bead down in here up against this surface, not up here. And that will give us some more room over here to work. And, uh, and also you can see the rim is pretty fragile. It's aluminum. Uh, this is an old one that I got in the barn and, and it got attacked by somebody with a giant pry bar. So there are some pretty uh, serious dents and gouges on the on the wheel. So if it gets too tough, just stop and think and don't get a, a longer lever. So first we're going to take this mixture of lubricant and we're going to just uh, slather this all around the bead area to make that easy. And we're gonna do that on the edge of the rim too. And it makes your hands slippery too, so it'll, uh, it'll sort of limit your torque. Now we're gonna push this down into there and we're gonna pry up. See, we've started to pop that off of there. And I like to have, uh, I like to have three spoons available. Cause you'll get in a spot like this. You need to get another bite, and you don't want to give up what you just gained, like I just, just did like there. Just like we did there. Yeah. So 
so in little bites and not too much pressure And there we have it. So we spooned off one side. And now we're going to lubricate the other side and then uh, get it off of there also. Voila, we have peeled the drum out intact. You can see the edges. Uh, we didn't we didn't bang it up, we didn't dent it, we didn't scar it. And we can save this tire for another day. You know, this tire, this is an original 1969 tire. This tire is older than I am. It's, yeah. uh, it's 45 years old and we just used it last weekend. So um, the, old, the old technology is kind of amazing. Uh, it wasn't high tech at all as far as the tread pattern, just like a tractor, and it really kind of sucked on side hills, but I wish I had the tires on my truck would last for 45 years. Okay, no <laughs> we all. All right, so we're going to get the rest of them. So after we got the tires and the tubes dismounted, we noticed that there's some uh, corrosion in here, some flaky powder stuff. You'll probably notice a big puff of stuff when we uh, dismounted the bead. So we're just going to take scotch Bright pad and we're just worried about uh, wear on the tube. So we're just going to knock off the high spots. We're not going to try and remove all of this, uh, this corrosion. You know, some moisture gets in there and uh, it'll make aluminum oxide, which is an abrasive. We're just going to knock off the high spots to make sure that we don't wear a hole in a tube. Well, here we are. The wheels are prepped and we're going to lube the wheel and the bead just like we did before. And we're also going to do that with the tire. Once again, don't go chintzy on it. This will save you a lot of heartache, folks. Put lots of lube on there. Make it wet. Make it slippery. Closer. That was the easy side, folks. Now, we're going to have to put the tube in, Bob. Tube. Yep. All right, so we have put our tube back in. And uh, we're actually using one of these very cool retainers that we got from Dave Filman at Filman Machining. Uh, Filman Machining is a great, great resource for all your Rokon parts. Um, and this is this is actually from like a World War II vintage Jeep is what it's made for. That's correct. And that's just a, a valve stem retainer. You know, when you're running a really low tire pressure like we do in the Rokons, and with the raw power and fury that we have available at our disposable, uh, it's it's pretty easy to slip the wheel inside the rim and you can lose the valve stem and then you can't add air or take air out you got to go through all this, this dismounting process 
and usually stab the tube in order to, to fix the tube and fix this. So using a valve stem retainer is a really cool thing. All right. Okay. All right, and we're gonna slather it up again. Well, it's a, just a little bit off, Bob, but I think it's going to work. Yeah, because we're going to be uh, we're going to be running a whole lot less pressure than what we have here anyway, and we're going two miles an hour. Uh, I'll go four. <laughs> I'll double that. Exactly. All right. Well, I say we mount it up on the bike and see how they look. So I'll take a point. All right, folks. Hey, we've got new tires on rims. Now all we got to do is put these rims on this bike, put the chains back on, set our tension and our alignment, and uh, down the trail we go. All right, let's go. There we have it. Brand new tires on this old Wilcon. You know, Bob, we got we got rid of these old. They're actually kind of iconic. These Goodyear Sure slips. Well, they're actually Sure grips, and truly iconic, judging from the back of your shirt. Right. I mean, it's a it's a it's a trademark. It's a recognized look. This this tread pattern and these big old giant fat tires are actually what attracted me to Wilcons in the first place. You know, but we've gone to a bigger, fatter tire. No, it's, it's actually smaller in circumference. It is, it is, but it's wider. And you know, you know, there were some drawbacks to these tires with the just the solid bar 
uh, they, they earned their reputation as a sure slip because in a in an off camber downhill situation there was a lot of times where that front wheel would just slip out from underneath you if you got a root or a branch or something underneath some leaves wet branch you know going oh. downhill 12 miles an hour that will throw you yep I get you so I think what you, what we did today was a worthy upgrade and and I think we can just say goodbye to those old sure slips and hey we got some we got some big horns on there I know. I, I think these are great. You know, they're going to give me the confidence I need, you know, when I hit six miles an hour and I, I'm going through the brush and I'm going over branches that, you know, I, I'm going to be evil Knievel Rokon style. Whatever works for you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I think, I think uh, if nothing else, that uh, you've got a machine that's got better shoes. Absolutely. The baby's and, uh, got new shoes. You know, if you've got new shoes, I mean, yeah. It all works from the ground up. That's right. That's right. But you, you know, traction, four wheel drive, any kind of drive, just relies on a contact patch. And so these have uh, a lot of individual knobs with a lot of uh, convoluted angles that are really going to grip in a lot of situations. So right. I think that's a worthy upgrade. You know, and the cool thing is, folks, uh, the the techniques that we use to mount and dismount these tires are the same techniques that you can use to do the same with your ATV or your quad or your pickup or your 4x4. Guess what? They didn't have the tire store back in the day. A fella just had to do it by himself. So uh, having that confidence and that knowledge is, is it's great to be able to do that yourself. Absolutely. So, hey, I hope this was uh, insightful, at least maybe a little bit informative, possibly a little bit entertaining video. Don't know about that. <laughs> We always appreciate you watching, and hey, leave your comments in the below if there's more Rocon or off-road oriented programming that we that you would like to see us do. We'd uh, we'd sure entertain that concept. Absolutely. And as always, stay safe. You can't take back a bullet, folks, and you never want to wish that you could. Have so, fun. So so always have fun and be safe. And uh, and uh, and uh, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. <laughs>